We start our surgery by making an AP X-ray in order to locate the exact position of our skin incision. And this may vary depending on the underlying pathology. If you have a disc herniation, for example, which is located at the level of the disc base, I would recommend that you make your skin incision exactly in the midline, uh, rather in the middle area of uh, the interlaminar window. If you have a caudal sequester, however, you may change this skin incision and put it up slightly more cranially uh, and vice versa for a cranial sequestration. And this will help you right from the beginning uh, to get your working trajectory directly targeted uh, at your pathology. And that's what, we're, what we want to do is we want to go straight to our pathology and do our target surgery. In case you are planning to do an over-the-top decompression, I would recommend that you make your skin incision just slightly paramedian. And this later on uh, will help you to go underneath the lamina and underneath the area of the spinous process to the contralateral side and into the contralateral recess. Once you have done that, and once you've made your skin incision, then you can place the dilator on the interlaminar window and you rest it on the bone of the facet joint. And you can actually feel that you are in the right position with your dilator when you slightly slip down towards uh, the interlaminar window, then you will feel this ridge and you can feel this going down from the facet joint to the interlaminar window. And once you have done that, you place the sleeve over the dilator and whilst inserting the sleeve, you rotate it by 90 degrees to 180 degrees. And what you do with that uh, is that you don't catch any of the plastic foil that is covering the patient's skin surface. And you also make sure that your working sleeve is facing medially towards the interlaminar window. When you do that, by doing this, you can make sure that you don't have too much soft tissue coming in from cranially and caudally. Your sleeve will be resting exactly uh, over the interlaminar window uh, facing the yellow ligament. And then you have no soft tissues which may obstruct your vision. So once you've placed your dilator and once you have uh, placed your sleeve, you can confirm the right position and the orientation uh, by checking on one AP and also one final lateral uh, X-ray. From here on, you insert the endoscope into the working sleeve and then basically the rest of the entire surgery is done under full endoscopic visualization. The image which you are seeing, which you are seeing from right inside the spinal canal is always the same way that the patient is lying on the operating table. So let's say, for example, uh, in a left-sided surgery, uh, you will see the left side is towards the patient's head that is cranially and the right side is looking caudally. The upper part of your image, this will be facing contralaterally to the uh, to the contralateral side and the bottom part of your image is basically the ipsilateral side looking at your uh, ipsilateral recess. At the beginning of your surgery your image will be obstructed with all kinds of soft tissues. So what you need to do is you first need to remove all of these soft tissues by grabbing them. There will be some bleedings and then you use the bipolar to stop these bleedings. But you need to do that so that you get a full anatomic orientation. Make sure that you keep these soft tissues out by correctly placing the sleeve as I described so that the sleeve is exactly uh, facing the, uh, the intermediately towards the interlaminar window. It's important especially in the beginning, that you expose all of the relevant bony structures of the facet joint and also of the cranial lamina. And you also need to expose the interlaminar window and you need to see the yellow ligament so that you get a full anatomic orientation. At this stage, you should also have checked the correct level of your working trajectory uh, and the correct targeted level on X-ray one last time. If you are a beginner to the technique and you're doing your first cases, I would recommend that you keep the x-ray in place during the surgery 
so that whenever you need to, you can easily check and reconfirm that your position is okay. If you are a more experienced surgeon, once you have confirmed, you may actually remove the x-ray and you can do the surgery from here on without having this x-ray uh, inside and then you can much more easily move around and it will simply make the surgery much more comfortable for you.